Hey, what's going on guys? This is Fino K from Soar Gaming. Today I'm going to be making a video on how to level the soul laners in the game. Uh, all the warriors, some guardians, maybe some assassins. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how to level their abilities throughout the game. And yeah, I got this idea from Emilzy from Obey. So I thought it was a pretty cool concept and it would help some people out. Maybe be informative to new players and maybe change people's minds on that are, you know, already pretty good at the game. So... Yeah, so let's just go ahead and start out. We're going to start out with the Warriors. Um, obviously, we're just going to go from uh, an alphabetical order. So we'll start out with Amaterasu. So at level 1, you want to be grabbing Heavenly Reflection, which is your 2 and your Wave Clear. Unless somebody's starting with you, there's a possibility that you could be grabbing your 1. You grab your 1 in support role, and sometimes you could grab it in solo if you're starting with somebody who's really good at melees. Um, so yeah, you'll be grabbing your 2, go into your 3, your dash, of course, so you can stack your 2 on the wave, and also so you have your escape. Put another point in your 2, then put a point in your aura. Um, then a, put a point in your ult, almost always put a point in your ult at level 5. Um, if you get ganked, you need the CC immunity, you need to be able to get out, and a lot of times you can have kill potential at level 5, because Ama's ult is amazing. So, then start putting points into your 2. You could point save here, and not put a point in either, and wait till level uh, nine or whatever and then put a point in both but just for this sake we're gonna put a point in that you're gonna put a point in your ult put a point in your ult whenever you can it's a very good ult and increase the damage a lot so and then max out your two and then start maxing out your aura of course because it's a heal you know it's your heal and your sustain but it also has the power and the movement speed which is insane okay and then at level 14 you have your two and your one maxed and your ult which is really good for ama this is like probably one of our strongest points in late game, of course. And then just, of course, put points into your dash. You can a lot of times use it for damage, so it's not bad to start leveling it now. So, yeah, that's how you level Ama. Um, pretty much always. This is probably what you do every time. So let's go to the next one. Well, and it's pretty straightforward. You get your bludgeon at level 1. It's your wave clear, and you can stack up the wave with it. And sometimes people will go scourge if they're on like a buff camp and they need to heal for whatever reason. They may, maybe took too much poke. But a lot of times you want to grab your shield bash so you can... Hit the other solo lane or group up the minions and use your two again. So you level your two twice and then put a point in Scourge. Then put a point in your ult. Almost always put a point in your ult again because kill potential with your stun. Uh, you need it for escape if you get ganked. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Start leveling your bludgeon again. Then you want to start leveling your Scourge. And then max out your bludgeon. But you could point save and not put a point in your Scourge. It's not that big a deal. Just make sure you max out your bludgeon and then put points in your ult. Your, your ult's important. You get so many things from it. You get power, protections, uh... That's pretty much it. I think it's a constant cooldown. They, they, uh, it's 75 seconds. But that, anyway, so you want to max out your Scourge before you max out your one. Of course, it's your heal, and it's a disarm, and it does damage, like good damage, too. And then uh, ma max your Shield Bash. Put points in your ult whenever you can, like I said. And yeah, that's pretty much how you want to level it every time. So Shield Bash after your other two. Points in your ult whenever you can. Next, we have Shock. So with Chalk, you want to be leveling it at the start of the game, your 1, of course. Then you put a point in your 2, point back in your 1. So now, if you group up the minions and you hit it with your 1 and your 2, the archers will die to bluestone um, without you meleeing at all. And then the, the melees, you'll have to auto maybe once, and then you will full clear the wave. So this is really good. Don't put a point. Don't put 1 here, 1 here, 1 here, because that's just it's not good, because you want to just full clear the wave so you can back up. And then, of course, at level 4, put a point in Rain Dance. Which is this is your heal. Put a point in your ult at level five. If you get a gank, if you get ganked, you need the CC immunity and the peel. And if somebody ganks your lane on your team, you have a lot of kill potential with the three second silence. So it's good at level five. Then you want to start putting points in your one. That's your wave clear and your main damage. And you max that out. Then put a point in your two. Max out your one. With shock, you don't really want to be leveling the ult. It, it just increases the damage. The silence uh, stays the same. Um, so yeah. You just want to be maxing out your torrent. A lot of people max out their heal, but I don't really like that because this gives you torrent gives you protections and a lot more damage. Uh, it's a really hard hitting ability. And right here, if you have these both maxed out, you can uh, like half health to carry if you just use your one and two on them. Plus, your rain dance scales off of your physical power well. So if you have any power built in, your heal's gonna still heal for a lot. So then, after you max these two out, you want to start putting points in your heal, and then put your points in your all at the end. So it's pretty simple. These two max out first. Rain dance after that. Don't put points in your ult whenever you can on chalk. Uh, wait till the end and then max it out. 
this one's a little different. Some people do different things. I usually start out with my one first, unless I know I can guarantee pressure with uh, like a jungle or something. Then I'll start my three, but usually I'll start my one if I'm starting alone because it's good damage on the wave. Let's you get your goal before it's tower if you're getting pressure really hard. Then you put a point in your three, which is your escape and your main wave clear. And you start putting points in your three. Pin at level four, of course. And then get your ult at level five because, again, I've said this about everyone, but kill potential. It's a heal so you can sustain. It's a good taunt. You know, it's just good to have. Then you want to max out your three. This is where it gets weird. Sometimes I'll max my pin if they have like a lot of weights. Like if, if I three into somebody and then use my one on them and they can just jump away, then I, my one's on, going to be on cooldown. Sometimes I'll put points in my two because it's like it's unmissable damage and it's like not that bad damage. But usually what you want to do is start putting points in your one. Um, so max uh, so put a point there. Don't worry about your ult right now. Max your three. Put points in your one after you have maxed your three and then put points in your ult because it's uh, a scaling heal and um, it gives you mitigation, damage mitigation when you ult. So it's good to have points in that, but these are more important early, so max those first. Then put points in your pin, ult whenever you can, and then just alternate, so then you'll have it all maxed out. So three and one are the most, most important, usually, unless they have a ton of escape and peel, then maybe just grab your two. And then po points in your ult after you have these two maxed. For Guan Yu, we're gonna be maxed, well, we're gonna be starting with our Talu Assault at level one. Then put a point in our dash, and then back a point in our uh, our three. At this point, we can kind of full clear the wave. If we can dash through the wave and also use all of our three, we're definitely full clearing it with bluestone and everything. So this is why you do that. Then put a point in conviction. Of course, get your ult at level five. Again, almost always do this because if you get ganked, you're fucked if you don't have this, right? If the enemy team's good at all, they can easily kill you without it. So then you want to max out your Talo Assault. Point into your heal. This ult is very good, but at this point you need your heals to be like very good in a team fight. So you want to max your three and then start putting all your points into your heal. So points in your heal, so you have these two max, similar to uh, Erling Shen. Have your one and your three max, and then you can put points in your ult, and then alternate between your two whenever you can and your ult whenever you can. So that's how you do it. Sometimes you can max your horse, like if you're if you don't want to be based on healing, but Guan Yu's heal is really good, especially if you have cooldown. If you have this maxed. Around this time you have this max, you'll have Breastplate most likely, which is like a really good power spike for Guan, because then he can just spam his heal on his teammates. So yeah, that's how you level him. On Hercules, you grab your two at level one. Um, almost always, you want to group up the wave, get all your damage off. A lot of times you can't hit the entire wave with your one, so you just grab your two. And put a point in your one, put another point in your one. This is your uh, main damage, and after you group it up with your two, you'll full clear with this. So at level three, you should be able to full clear with Bluestone. You have to melee the melees a couple times but you'll be fine um heal at level four ult at level five it does a lot of damage at level five so you almost always get it and it gives you cc immunity so um and then start putting points into your driving strike and at, at this level you could point save and grab your uh point in your ult and your driving strike which isn't bad but we can't do this on here obviously so we're gonna put a point in our heal then a point in excavate this does a lot of damage and if you hit it twice then it's even it's multiplied damage right so that's good. So driving strike. Now your driving strike strike is benched, bleh, maxed out. So now you want to put points into your mitigate wounds. That's your heal. It's most one of the best abilities in the game. <laughs> it does so much. It gives you protections too now. So leveling that is super important. And your heal, you'll get so much health returned with that passive. And then you get points into your two, of course. Ult whenever you can. Just max these two out. That's a it's a very um, common theme with. Uh, almost everybody in the game is you just leave one ability at level one and then max it out when you can so now for nike nike is uh, a little different um i guess not usually you'll put like two points in one and uh, one point in the other and then have get the other one at level four but with nike you grab your ren and then you grab your leap almost always unless you have so much pressure that you don't have to worry about having your leap but you almost want, always want to grab that and then usually you would think well let's just put two points into ren because it'll you know increase the damage but you actually want to put a point in plan of action because it will actually increase the damage more of Ren because you hit three times and it gives you bonus damage I think um, looking at it earlier if you put another point in Ren it does 70 extra damage at level uh, 3 but if you put a point into the, uh, to plan of action it'll do 110 more damage so that's pretty important plus you get the HP 5 from it it's like 10 HP 5 at rank 1 so that's pretty good in lane you know it's not nothing to you know forget so 
and then put points into Ren. <clears throat> get your ult at level 5. The slow on it is insane, especially if you use your 2, and you just need it to survive if you get ganked, for the most part. Start putting points into Ren, and then after you uh, are at level 4, or level 4 Ren, you want to put points to plan of action. Put points into your ult whenever you can. The slow increases and increases the max health you get back, so that's really good. Uh, rend, of course. Max out rend. Then start maxing out plan of action. Back to your ult. Because, again, it's just so important. It does so many things. Then max out plan of action. And then, of course, level these two abilities whenever you can. Level your ult whenever you can. Alright, for Odin, we're going to be starting uh, our jump at level 1. It does 120 damage plus blue stone, so that's pretty good. And you need your jump just so you can escape and everything. Put point in a Raven Shout. Put two points in a Raven Shout. This is your main wave clear. It does a lot of damage to you and gives you a crazy shield. So when you have it maxed out, the shield's really good. Put a point into You could put uh, two points into these and just not have Gunger's Might at level 4. But Gunger's Knight, Might is like an underrated ability, I think. It applies blue stone and it's a slow. So if like you're getting chased down, you could use it to slow. So I think it's good to have at level 4. Um, put a point to Ring of Spears at level 5. You sometimes have a lot of kill potential if they can't get out and like they, you just hit level 5 before them because you full clear. So it's not bad to have at level 5. Plus, if somebody ganks you again, you want to have it just in case. So. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, it wouldn't be totally against just putting another point into uh, Raven Shout at level 5. So then you have uh, rank 3 of it. So then you start maxing out Raven Shout. And then after Raven Shout, put points in your jump. So, and then you start putting points in your jump, and you have that these two maxed out. You don't want to level your, your ult or your Gunger's Might, because um, the thing with leveling the ult is you get, like, I think, increased attack speed reduction and something something like that. But, like, if some if you're ulting somebody with your cage, it's usually, like, one or two people. And, like, they're not going to be fighting back. They're just trying to survive in the cage until it's done, for the most part, if Odin's ever relevant in a game. So it, they're just trying to survive. So the attack speed reduction isn't that big of a deal. So you just want to put points in these because then your your jump is going to going to be hitting for like 600 or something ridiculous. So <clears throat> that's how you do that. And then start leveling Gungur's Might. Increases the damage, so that's good. And you just want to level that and then level your Ring of Spears. By that time, ADCs will be getting their attack speed reduced by a lot, and that's late game, so that's kind of important. So oh, I didn't even know you could skip. Huh, interesting. Anyway, so with Osiris, Osiris is a little different. Some people do different things. I level my two first because you can hit it when it's at their tower range, and then you can also hit it when it comes to meet. So it's important to group up. You can auto attack the enemy solo laner and then group them up and hit them with your two. So that's important. Then you want to put points in your one. Back to your two. At level th uh, level four, you want to grab Judgment Tether and then put a point in your ult. You have a lot of kill potential, of course, because you're Osiris and you just win every lane. So put a point in your ult. It's also your escape again. Um, start putting points into Spirit Flail. You want to max this out. It's your main wave clear. You can use uh, auto attacks to clear too, but it's also really good poke. And uh, you can group up the wave and full clear it and then not have to worry about, like, you can walk into the jungle or, you know, just try and poke them out with your one. So so once you have that maxed out, put a point in your one. Oh, not maxed out, but level four. And then start putting points back into it. And you want to max these two out first. And then Judgment Tether. A lot of times you, you're going to be like getting guaranteed ults, but Judgment Tether is such a good ability that you want to max it out before. It increases the damage reduction. It also, uh, I think it reduces the cooldown. I'm not sure, but it's just such a good ability that you want to uh, put points in it. Maybe, it, yeah, it increases the, the stun, I'm pretty sure. That's for sure. Um, and then put points in your ult. And sometimes, I, like, I wouldn't be like totally against just putting points in your ult if you have guaranteed ults because it does a lot of damage, but... Again, this ability is so good that you just want to max it. All right, for Robin, Robin's a little different too. You could put a point in your three at level one, but they reduce the damage on it at level one, and it's uh, on a pretty long cooldown. So you just want to put a point in your one, and then put a point in your three, put a point back in your one, so now you have level two. Um, at this point, it's, this is hitting pretty hard, and you can group up the wave if you hit the enemy solo laner with this, and then hit it, hit the entire wave with your one, so that's important to think about. Put a point in overhead kick, then get your ult at level 5. Your ult's really good, so you want to get it at level 5. It does a lot of damage and so much damage mitigation, and you can get a lot of kills with it too. So, And again, easy escape, CC immunity and everything. And then you want to max out your 1. Put a point in, uh, you could pro probably uh, point skip again, using this or whatever, at level 8 to 9. 
but I like to just put a, two points in that, put max out my prawn onslaught, and then start maxing my ult. And then whenever you can, put a point in your ult, because it increases the damage by a, a good amount now. And it also reduces the cooldown, so you can just be ulting on cooldown, so that's good. So then max out your uh, your heal, which is your three. Put points into this, too. This reduces... All of these abilities are so good, it's crazy, because you would almost always want to put a point to this because it lowers the cooldown and that's your immunity so like if you have a low a low cooldown immunity like that's good but also your ult's just so good now that you want to put points into it so um just alternate in between your your overhead kick and mystic rush and level your ult whenever you can on robin okay so wukong's one of those people one of those gods that's pretty unique as well because you could level him pretty differently so at level one you almost always grab your uh your cudgel and then at level 2, sometimes you can grab your Master's Will, unless you're getting pressured a lot, then you want to grab your uh, 72 Transformations. So that you, this applies Bluestone, it does decent damage, so you can go through the wave with it. Um, and then put 2 points in a Cudgel, right, at level 3. Get your Master's Will at level 4, and then at this point you're full clearing the wave with your 1 and 2, if you hit everything. Um, Oh, at level 5, you know, you just need it to survive. And you can also dive uh, the enemy tower a lot of times if you can get your, your decoy to tank. If you have any kill potential, it's pretty good. So um, Some people max, this is where it gets weird, some people max their Master's Will. I like to max my Cudgel now, it's not bad poke and it full clears. And then also right here, some people will start maxing their um, 72 transformations, which isn't bad. And it's like, if you get your stun, that's I think it goes up to 380 damage, which is insane. Like that's a 280 damage increase so i'm not like totally against it but a lot of times you're just using your three for your escape or just to like get into the fight so i'll put points on my master's will so i'll alternate in between these well not alternate but i'll max out cudgel and then max out my master's will this is guaranteed damage it's a slow it's like a low 10 second cooldown right you're just going to be spamming this especially with cooldown so like I just like putting into that and then start putting points into 72 transformations you lower the cooldown of your ult by i think 20 seconds if you level it but these abilities are so good that you just want to get these maxed out first so almost always master's will and cudgel first but you know i'm not against leveling transformations but it is your escape a lot of the time so it just doesn't really make a lot of sense but it does lower the cooldown so it's wukong's pretty unique in that aspect so you could probably level them however you want <laughs> but yeah this is pretty good to do so and then points in your ult when you can. So tier's a little different now because you used to have to put a point in your change stance in order to use the ability, but now you don't have to. So at level one, I usually grab my fearless because you're able to fearless the enemy soul laner and the wave, the entire wave, and then switch stances and one back through it. But if you know you're gonna get out cleared or you think it's, you're not gonna be having your jungle around, you can start your two in order to just have that little sustain and that extra damage. And then you put a point at level 2 into your 2, of course. Two points in your 2. At rank 3, or at level 3, you used to have to put a point in right here so you could use your uh, your blue stance as well. But now that they changed that, you just want to put two points in your 2, so now your heal is getting better. And you put a point in Fearless, and then a point in your ult at level 5, for the most part. Sometimes you, cannot, you can get away with it if you have, like, you're like you ahead or you get a lot of uh, pressure. But usually you just put a point in your ult just to be safe. Um, then you want to be maxing out your two and fearless. Again, you don't have to put points in this right now because you can just use it without having a point in it. Max out cleave. This is your heal and your main form of da damage. Then you're fearless. And now your ult's at level one and it increases in damage and lowers the cooldown uh, if you level it. But you also get protections and power uh, from, change from leveling your change stance. So that's more important. So you want to level that until it's maxed. And then, of course, put points in your ult. So with Famana, at level 1 you want to grab your Umbrella Ring, um, and then at level 2 your Armored Umbrella, unless you're like getting destroyed and you want to grab Clear the Paths just so you can you can use it through the wave and get the Bluestone uh, passive on the wave, so that's good. But usually you grab uh, your Armored Umbrella at level uh, level 2, and then you put a, another point in Umbrella Ring. So now if you hit the entire wave with Umbrella Ring, the double tap, and then hit it with your 2, the Archers will die to Bluestone and the Melees will just need a couple of auto attacks and they should die. And then put a point and clear the path at level 4 and a point in your ult at level 5, CC immunity, um, and sometimes you can dive towers with it, but for the most part you just want it just in case you get ganked. But you can get, a, sometimes you can get away with not putting a point to it and putting another point into this, and at this point the archers are dying to the uh, umbrella ring basically. Um, so now, let's just say you put a point at level 5, so you put a 
another point in umbrella rating at level six, and then you start maxing out armor and umbrella. This is the easiest ability to hit in the game. It does good damage. Um, you stop maxing this because at this point this is full clearing the archers, and that's all you want um, at level three. But after you have maxed out armor and umbrella, you want to start maxing out umbrella ring. The double tap on it's really good. It does a lot of damage. So, you know, but this is just more guaranteed. And then start putting points in to clear the path. Some people will put points in their ult whenever they can here. I like to put points in to clear the path because you use it as damage a lot of the time. And um, you get auto attack cancel off of it. And it's just so much damage. If you if you um, clear the path, you auto clear the path, auto, two, and then three auto. It's like so much damage in the, in the littlest amount of time. So it's good to max that. But it's, I'm not totally against just putting points in your ult uh, before clear the path. And then after all that, put your points in your ult. Now for some of the guardians, um, we're going to start out with Athena. So Athena, you put a point in shield wall, then your dash, back into shield wall. Shield wall does a lot of damage at this point. If you get aggro from the minions by hitting this enemy soul laner with like a reach, and you hit them with both hits of the three, they're going to basically full clear the wave with uh, reach and everything. So um, at this point, you could put another point into your dash. So it's rank two, rank two shield wall at level four. But I like to put a point into taunt just so I can like, uh, I can grab aggro easier and I can use another reach. Uh, Use, it, use another stack of reach or whatever. And then put a point up to your ult at level 5. Sometimes you can get a really good rotation, so you want to have that. And um, you can use it to get back to lane, especially if you hadn't bought TP, because a lot of times you don't want to buy TP on Athena, because it's kind of redundant. So you want to max out Shield Wall. It's your main wave clear and does a shit ton of damage, one of the most damaging guardian abilities in the game. So uh, put a point into that. So some people will start putting points into their, their dash after their Shield Wall. Uh, just a lot of damage, but if this is like a real game and you trust your teammates You want to max your taunt because your taunt duration goes up to two seconds, right? And that's just so much CC like that's a, a long duration CC taunt Just one of the best abilities in game, right? So if you can trust your teammates and you know like this is a good game Then you definitely max your confound and definitely max your confound in competitive right uh, second because then you're getting so much set up for your team um, at this point, you could put points in your ult because it, the damage goes up a lot. It does a lot of damage, and it lowers the cooldown. Um, but you could also just max your, your dash at this point, like max it all the way out. It lowers the cooldown, does more damage, right? So it's not bad to have. And like uh, at this point, you're going to have almost max CDR, right? With So your Defender of Olympus is going to be on a short cooldown anyway. So um, yeah, this is what I would do. I would max my dash first just for the damage and the lower cooldown. But I wouldn't be against, again just leveling your ult instead of this and just alternating so all right with Kabraken, level your tremors first right because you can clear the entire wave so it's good then you level your uh, two you can group up the wave and then two it if you grab aggro from the enemy soul laner by hitting him with tremors two points into your one or your two my bad um then put a point in seismic crush so now one two th uh one and then you're going to put a, a point in your ult at level five you can get a, a easy kills if you have any poke on the enemy soul laner and you just ult them and then use your abilities on them. You, a lot of times you can kill them, so that's why you grab your ult at level 5. Um, then you want to max out your refraction shield. It does a lot of damage, increases the damage, increases protections, it increases the stun duration. It's just so many benefits from it, so you max that out. This is where, like, this is where it's kind of weird. You could max, put like a couple points into tremor, so then it's like clearing the wave really easily. But a lot of times you just want to put points into your seismic crush. Um, because it does a lot of damage, right? It increases the movement speed on it, and um, you can use it to poke really easily. So usually you want to max your one after that. But I've been maxing Tremors lately, and it's kind of fun to do. I don't know how great it would be, but this is usually what you want to do. Um, then put points in your ult, make it level 3. It does more damage, obviously. And then Tremors, and then back into your ult, right? So just alternate between these. I think I did it wrong, but you get the point. Just... Put a point in your ult whenever you can after you have these two max. So with Sobek, you want to be grabbing your Sickening Strike at level 1. And then almost always grab your Tail Whip at level 2. Unless you can make some play around your tower with Charge Prey, your Pluck. But usually you're just you're going to be grabbing Tail Whip. And then you're going to put a, another point back into Sickening Strike. You don't really need the escape because you're Sobek, right? Um, you're tanky and everything. you got sustain. So put another point back in Sickening Strike. Then put a point in Pluck at level 4. Gear ult at level 5. Your ult. Can use you can use your ult to clear the next wave. You can, it recharges mana for you, especially because you use a lot of mana as Sobek um, in solo without any like MP5 or anything. So then you're gonna start putting points into Sickening Strike. It's your main wave clear and your sustain, so that's good. 
Uh, you could point save here, like skip, and then have two points in your ult and max out your sickening strike, but we're just gonna do this and then put a point into your ult. You wanna be maxing your ult whenever you can. It does so much extra damage and it also increases the slow. So, so um, yeah, put points in your ult whenever you can. Max out sickening strike, then tail whip. Ult when you can. Tail whip is uh, your next uh, max ability because if you have this at maxed out and then your, your uh, tail whip at uh, rank two, if you sickening strike the wave and then tail whip it, it should full clear, so that's good to have. And then, uh, put points in your pluck, of course, when you can. Back into your ult, and you know, that should max you out. For Terra, Terra's a little different. I play her a little differently than other people play her. I think most people will grab her Crushing Earth at level uh, level one, and then Force of Nature. With Crushing Earth at level one, you can do the minis on your blue, and then you can go to your wave, and if you clear the entire wave, you'll hit level two, right? So that's good to have. You just auto the, the minis and then walk over and you know clear the wave. So it'd be level two. And then at rank three, this is a little different than others, uh, other solo laners too. You want to put a point in your monolith, so now you have one, one, one. And if you clear correctly, if you use your crushing earth, dash through it, and hit the entire wave, and then throw your monolith down and dash through the wave again uh, with your monolith, it should almost full clear the entire wave, which is pretty crazy considering you have no power or anything. You basically full clear the wave. So that's good. I do things a little differently now. I, uh, I max my monolith, put a point in my ult whenever at level 5 of course because you can ult for your team across the map and if you get ganked you kind of need it so then you put a point in that at level 5 but also I max my monolith first because they changed it so it does uh, immediate damage and it goes up to 200 and then it has a tick damage and minions are going to be in the tick because they're rooted and you're just dashing through it at uh, aggro range so if you're dashing through it you're they're going to you're going to get almost all the tick damage off so it's good to have monolith plus it's sustain it's on a, a high cooldown but it's your sustain in lane, so like if you get poked out at all when you're dashing through the wave and stuff by like a, an Osiris or something, you want to have it to sustain a little bit. So then put a point to Crushing Earth. Put a point to your ult whenever you can. It increases the uh, CDR that your teammates get and yourself, of course, and it increases the heal. It's just a really good ability, so you want to max that when you can. Max out Monolith, then Crushing Earth. Ult when you can, Crushing Earth, and then dash um, after that. But also keep putting points in your ult while you're maxing out Force of Nature. So with Jingtin, um, you can kind of get away with doing anything with him. I mean, obviously you need to max your Furious war Roar first. Uh, that's your rank one ability, or your level one ability rather. Put a point into your Sky Cutting Axe, that's your escape, and you can use it twice on the wave. So if you can group up the wave by like hitting the enemy solo laner, you can hit it twice with this. So you get pretty good clear. Um, put two points in your Furious Roar at level four get your hook slam and then at level five get your ult if they play around your tower you can ult force their ult if it's like a Bologna or somebody you know like anybody basically the cc immunity they're gonna have to ult if they're playing around your tower at all with like uh, like half health or whatever so get your ult level five you also if you get ganked you could throw the both of them into the tower or you know get the enemy jungle's beads and try and just get out so then you want to max your furious roar Sometimes people people used to max this the sky cutting axe it increased protections and it's good damage But now this the hook slam not now. This was a while ago buff But now the hook slam increases in uh, root duration and does a lot of damage So you want to max that out whenever you can so max these two out first fierce roar and then hook slam Don't put points to your ult. It's not that great of an ability. Just use it for setup and CC Put points near sky cutting axe so you can get uh, the extra damage and the protections which are nice And then put points to your ult at the end of the game whenever you have these three mixed out. All right, so you mirror, uh, you of course get your two, your wave clear at level one. Uh, then you put a point into freeze, put a point, two points into glacial strike. You're basically full clearing now. If you hit the archers, I think like once or twice after you two, and you have your frostbite passive on them, you'll uh, you'll clear those. And you have a lot of pressure because you can freeze the enemy solo laner and the front melee. So this is good. And like you could put a, another point into frost breath right here so now you have two two and you don't have a point in your wall and then you put a point in your ult however sometimes you'll just want to put a point in your wall just so you can like maybe group up the wave better or like wall off some some form of attack by the enemy uh so or like a jungle rotation or something so but um i'm not totally against this and then put a point into your glacial strike then put a point to your wall put a point to your uh, glacial strike uh get your shards of ice you know you want to max that out because shards of ice does a ton of damage right does so much extra damage. I think it goes up to 1100 and just scaling, not without like the magical power or anything. So then 
points in a glacial strike, max that out, then start maxing out your your uh, your freeze because it increases in damage and increases stun duration, which is really important. Point your ult when you can, max out Frostbath, and then start putting points into your wall. Um, and then just, you know, put a point to your ult whenever you can, so. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was informative. Sorry for the length of it. I, you have to go through it. I tried to go for it, through it pretty fast, so. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we're going to be trying to upload videos consistently now. Uh, so go ahead and subscribe and comment if you have any questions or any feedback or anything like that. So thanks, guys. Bye.